Tourism was big in Florida, but Miami, in particular, had grown into a very tourist-oriented city. The name Burdine Stadium didn't seem to have the national identity they were looking for. So the city fathers decided that they could leverage off of the national image of the popular annual Orange Bowl events and rename the Burdine Stadium into the Orange Bowl Stadium. The name became an instant national success. With a new decade marching in, greatness and history once again embraced the Orange Bowl. President John F. Kennedy and his wife Jacqueline greeted surviving members of the Cuban Invasion Brigade 2506 on December 29, 1962, after the failure of the Bay of Pigs invasion. I think it's time America started moving again. Survivors presented Kennedy with the brigade's flag. Kennedy's response to the presentation was the promise of its return to the brigade in a free Cuba. Miami and Dade County were a lot smaller in the 1940s and 50s than they are today, and the Orange Bowl was a much more uh, viable option for people in terms of entertainment, uh, athletic entertainment, than what we have today. You can pick from so many things in Greater Miami today, but the Orange Bowl at one point was where the action was. Football games, uh, different exhibitions, fireworks, uh, bands that played here a day after the Orange Bowl Classic was over. We only had one deck on the Orange Bowl until 1947. That's when they double decked it. And so people came down here for a lot of different events. And I think a lot of Miamians took a lot of pride in this place. We were on national radio every New Year's Day because of the Orange Bowl game. Uh, we went to television in the early 1950s every New Year's Day because of the Orange Bowl game. And I think we had a close identity with this Orange Bowl because of its fame and its place within Miami's standing. In 1966, the house that Hurricane Football built was about to get a new tenant. Finally, after years of political wrangling, the NFL granted the Orange Bowl a nationally sanctioned team. Two entrepreneurs, Joe Robbie and television star Danny Thomas, became the AFL's newest team owners. And Danny Thomas uh, was, was Joe Robbie's silent partner uh, in the initial uh, uh, purchase of the Dolphins. Joe didn't have any money. He was a a lawyer working in uh, Minneapolis and had, I think, 11 or 12 kids at the time and was making about uh, $25,000 a year. They were awarded the franchise in 1965 to begin playing the American Football League in 1966. Uh, the franchise price tag was $7.5 million and the ownership group got together after being awarded the franchise and had their first meeting and they basically sat down and looked at each other and said, okay, now what do we do? Well, who's gonna run this thing? And as my dad used to tell it, they all kind of looked at him and said, hey, you put this deal together, you go to Miami and run the franchise. On September 2nd, 1966, 26,776 people packed the Orange Bowl to watch the first home game played by Miami's newest professional sports team. And so began the passion between the great stadium and NFL football. Orange Bowl magic greeted the team's first kickoff return with a touchdown. Joe Auer sliced through the Raiders' defense for 95 yards, and the die was cast for the Dolphins' future. Yeah, I think everybody with the Orange Bowl games ended up buying tickets and being a Dolphin fan. I got permanent seats. I said, I want these two seats until I die. Until I say, I'm dead, I don't want them, just keep sending them to my house. Everybody was into it. It was all that anybody talked about. It's what you started every Monday morning with. The Miami Dolphins represented the only professional sports franchise south of Atlanta. And you had fans from the west coast of Florida and Tampa and Orlando and Jacksonville that to this day still embrace the Miami Dolphins because the Dolphins were their team. And, um, and because of that, even though the population was smaller, um, the building was always packed. It was overflowing. And uh, there, was, there was a passion that was undivided. There was no Miami Heat. There was no Florida Marlins. There were no Florida Panthers. Uh, it was hurricane football, and it was Miami Dolphin football. And when you showed up there on game day, those games really mattered. 